reason I'm wearing a jacket is I am already sweating. So I want to introduce you to Ovid. Ovid was kind of a rock star of his age, ancient Greece. He said this, there is nothing in the world which is permanent. Everything flows onward. All things are brought into being with a changing nature. He was talking about the one truth of mankind. Everything changes. And change has been good to us. It's led to great inventions. It's led to get a better life. But something has happened in the last 10 years. Change has really sped up. The ways of change in business, in organizations, in governments, in economies come so fast that we don't have the time to react to it anymore. Where change was something we could adjust to, now change rolls businesses over. A business is alive today and it is gone tomorrow because the change went so fast. And with that has come complexity. Business is so hard to deal with nowadays. It's hard to understand everything. No one person in your organization can grasp the magnitude of an interconnected world that changes constantly when there's so much information coming at us. And this is what business is faced with today. Something that looks like that. But unfortunately, business has an ancient law, right? We're still kind of running businesses in an old industrial age where we think that we can control all the information. We always have all the analytics to guide us. If we just stick to the status quo and we make some smart decisions that were made by people before us, we'll, we'll advance. We'll move on. This is how business is done. But this is false logic in a modern world. Business values this side of the brain, the left side, analytical, logical. It says we need to critique things that have been done to decide what to do. But the new age asks for creativity, imagination, and the ability to create new ideas. And this requires what I call radical collaboration. The only way this happens, the unleashing of imagination in organizations, is when we get people together. And I don't mean teamwork, making people like each other. I'm talking about how you source your best ideas, how you get better, richer, more holistic ideas that can deal with the complexity. Because having the one expert nowadays, having the one marketing expert, the one sales expert, is not enough when problems are as complex as they are. Now we need multidisciplinary teams. When we have a marketing problem, let's bring marketers together, sales people together, operation people together, our customers together. Because it's only by wrapping all these brains around a problem that we really come up with great ideas. I love this quote. My model for business is the Beatles. They were four guys that kept each other's negative tendencies in check. They balanced each other. And in the total, was the greater than some of the parts. Great things in business are not done by one person. They are done by a team of people. Who do you think said that? would say something like that, but teamwork, Steve Jobs, the one man that we really think of as the sole genius, understood at Apple that great things happened because we brought a diversity of people together, not just one great genius. Even he could not create the greatness of Apple by himself. He needed people around him to unleash the genius that we see in his products today. He understood that business today is going to run more like a movie set than like we have it with the departments we have nowadays. A movie set brings together people with very different skills to do one thing over a period of time. Those people afterwards break up and go work on other projects. They may come back together to work again, but they come together temporarily. The way you make this happen is one connecting your people. The idea of departments is becoming a very old idea. We need to start getting people to talk. When we get people to talk about things, people from one department to another, a different part of your company than another, we start to unleash better ideas because more brains are being put against the challenge. It's also about, why don't we collaborate with our consumers? Right? When we need to come up with great ideas, why don't we ask them for the ideas? Rather than sitting around and thinking a focus group can tell us what's in their minds, we bring them to the table. Smart companies do this all the time where they co-create with their consumer the solution the consumer wants. A good example is my former employer, Red Bull, where almost every one of our outlandish ideas started with an insight of consumer. It was often that we would find ourselves around a table, a bunch of people from Red Bull with people from the street, the real consumer, informing us, not at the end when we launched, but in the beginning when we were doing our thinking. Other companies understand that radical collaboration is sometimes working well with your suppliers and your partners. When we have a problem, why don't we reach out to people who 
share some of what we do. A good example of this is IBM. IBM in 2003 had a semiconductor business that had already lost $1 billion. And they were floundering. But they reached out to all of their suppliers, all these engineering and semiconductor uh, supply companies. They said, work with us. Help us understand the problem better. And by working together in three years, they took over the semiconductor market and they become incredibly profitable on it. But because the ideas came from all of them. The other thing you need to know is we need to love the freaks and the geeks in life. We hire people who are a lot like us. Often who have the same education, the same experiences. But it's people who don't think like us that stretch our thinking and that give us our new ideas, but we often don't bring them into the conversation. We often don't invite them into our country. This is Guy Kawasaki. Guy Kawasaki, for many years, was called the Apple Software Evangelist. When he started in Apple, he knew nothing about software. He was a jewelry salesman. But Steve Jobs saw that he had something in him, a different perspective that could enrich the conversation in Apple. It also means about getting very intimate with your consumer. Because we keep trying to solve problems by understanding technologically what's feasible, business, what's viable, right? But we don't often think enough about what's desirable by people. But radically collaborative teams with different perspectives bring the human spirit to an idea and to a problem and they add to it. And what we need to do is we need to have more of that, more diverse people at the table. And that includes here with the legal when we're talking about our social problems, our economic problems, our crime problems. We need to bring not just the experts, not just government officials, we need to bring everyone to the table in order to solve the problem. I love this from Margaret Mead. Never doubt that a small, in my own edition, diverse and different group of thoughtful and committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. Radically collaborative teams that engulf all the people involved in the problem will always create a better, more creative solution. Thank you.